Moving forward with the molecular Hamiltonian, we'll notice from the previous video that the Hamiltonian we had was uh, pretty complicated, involved, has a lot of symbols, a lot of terms. So we'd like to do something which cuts down on the amount of stuff we have to write and remember in order to use that. And that's going to uh, be what we're doing here with atomic units. So uh, SI units for common physical quantities, things like distance, mass, charge, energy, are standard units, SI units of, ma of you know, meters, kilograms, coulombs, joules. Those are inconvenient for the molecular microscopic scale that we're operating at when we're talking about atoms and molecules. So what we're going to do is introduce a system of units which is not only convenient mathematically, but is also appropriate for the, the magnitude of the units that we're going to be typically using in any type of quantum chemistry calculation. Right, so for the unit of mass, uh, the most convenient thing would be to use a unit of the mass of the electron, since electrons are what we are most concerned with in molecular quantum mechanics. So we set the mass of the electron equal to 1. We'll remind ourselves that the mass of the electron in SI units was 9.109 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. So we go from quite a small number to quite a manageable, convenient number. For charge, we go from, <clears throat> we make charge of the electron equal to 1, or the magnitude of the charge of the electron equal to 1, which is 1 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. This is also convenient because as we see, the charge of the electron appears frequently in a lot of these energy terms. Um, something we don't think about as much in terms of it, what it is directly, but um, actually the units of angular momentum is going to allow us to set h bar equal to 1. So Planck's constant being 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds, Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, which is h bar, that is uh, going to be 1.055 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. So h bar, anywhere we see that, that becomes a 1 as well. Um, also, the permittivity of free space multiplied by 4 pi, that is going to be 1. So 1.113 times 10 to the negative 10 coulomb squared per joule meter. Permittivity of free space. And lastly, um, if you put all of these units together and see what unit of distance we get as a result, the length we get is called the Bohr radius. Uh, which is going to be our 1 of distance, which is about 5.292 times 10 to the negative 11 meters, or about 0 0.529 angstroms. Okay, so if we put this into action with the various terms that we have, we have kinetic energy for electrons and nuclei, and we have our potential energy uh, for nuclear-nuclear repulsion, nuclear electron attraction, and electron electron repulsion. This allows us to simplify each of these terms down quite a bit into a simpler form. So we go from negative sum i equals 1 to n number of electrons. Uh, h bar squared is 1 squared, so that goes away. Uh, mass of the electron goes away. Uh, Laplacian operator stays. And sometimes we don't want to fully write out this that this sum goes from i equals 1 to n. Sometimes we might assume that it's clear from the context what this is a sum over, and by indicating i, we're saying that we're doing this over all of all the electrons, as we saw in the previous video. So our simplification is that our electron kinetic energy term now becomes negative sum over i, 1 half del squared i. So that's nice, much simpler term. For nuclei, we don't get the same approximation with mass because the nuclei uh, do not have a mass, which is um, the mass of the electron. It's much bigger. But the h bar squared still goes away, so we get a slightly simpler term. And uh, now instead of using the mass of the nucleus in kilograms, we're going to use the mass of the nucleus measured in, uh, measured in masses of the electron. So for example, a hydrogen atom, which is a single proton, is about 1,800 times the mass of an electron. So for a typical nucleus, you'll get something which is somewhere between 1,000 and 100,000 times greater than the mass you would expect for an electron. 
but uh, more approximations coming in the next video which help us deal with this term even more. Okay, so then we move on to our potential energy terms. We start off with nuclear nuclear repulsion where we see charge of the electron E squared is going to be 1 squared so that goes away. 4 pi epsilon naught is 1, that goes away. So we're left with a sum and sometimes we might just indicate a pairwise sum as a single summation of A less than B as we see here um, would be restricted by the value in this inner sum where B has to start at some value which is uh, greater than A. So our pairwise sum there if we see that it's an A and a B we know that those are nuclei using those types of indices versus I and J for electrons. So that gives us for each of those terms just ZA, ZB over RAB. Number of protons in each nucleus divided by the distance that the nuclei are apart. And then our unit of distance for RAB would be in uh, uh, units of the Bohr radius or Bohrs. Right, then our nuclear electron attraction term, negative sign out in front for attraction as there was positive for repulsion. Sum over all nuclei, sum over all electrons. Uh, we get the E squared cancels, 4 pi epsilon naught cancels, and you're left with negative sum. And in this case, if we're summing fully over both of these variables, rather than having some pairwise sum, I might just list both of those variables in that summation. So I have negative sum IA, ZA over RIA, number of protons in nucleus A divided by distance between electron I and nucleus A. Then finally, our last term, the electron-electron repulsion. It's going to be the pairwise sum over all I and J electron pairs. E squared goes away, 4 pi epsilon naught goes away, and we're left with the simplest term overall, sum I less than J, 1 over Rij. So 1 over the distance between the electrons uh, added up over all electron pairs. Right, so as I mentioned there, um, the charge of the electron, the charge of the nucleus that's appropriate to use is the number of protons there, which would be its total charge in units of E or units of charge of the electron. So for hydrogen, that would be one; for helium, two, etc. As you move up the periodic table. All right, so that gives us a much simplified and easier to write Hamiltonian. We're making progress towards something that's more manageable there. So we have our molecular Hamiltonian in atomic units, uh, no approximations thus far, just atomic units in use. It'll be negative sum over all electrons, one half del squared i, minus sum over all nuclei, one over two mass of nucleus times del squared a, negative sum over all, all electrons and nuclei, charge divided by distance, plus sum over all electron pairs, one over their distance, plus sum over all nucleus pairs, their number of protons multiplied divided by how far they are apart.